C. Lindelof videos optimization problem number five. Determine the cylinder with the largest volume that can be inscribed in a cone of height eight centimeters and base radius four centimeters. Well, this is a really interesting problem because we have this really weird thing here. And it's really hard to see, so hopefully you can, you'll can you be able to see this with me. Remember, we need two equations. So one, we want this, we want volume, right? So you want the volume of our cylinder, which would be pi r squared h. So here's the issue that I'm having with this, is to convert this into something a little bit different. We know that the radius here, this is the way I'm going to look at this. I'm going to look at this as if this was the x-axis and this is the y-axis. Right? So then we'd have that this is the point zero, 0, This would be the point zero, 0,8, wouldn't it? And this would be the point four zero. So if this is x and this is y, then I could change this a little bit and say that the volume is equal to pi x squared y. And maybe you'll see why I'm doing this in just a second. So, But this is my primary equation. This is the primary. This question is so short, it seems so easy, but it has a little bit of uh, thought process to it. So I'm going to go down here. The next thing I'm going to look for is this. And then the next thing we know is that this thing is constrained by this cone right here, isn't it? But this cone, right, look at this. Here's the x-axis. Here's the y-axis. So what I'm saying is, here is this, that we have this line. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the equation of this line, and it's really hard for people to get their head wrapped around this, but there's this line right here, and it's a line that passes through the point 0, 08 and the point 40. So all I'm going to do now is <clears throat> I'm going to use point-slope theorem. Actually, I'm going to use just slope theorem first and say that the slope of that line is 8 minus 0 over 0 minus 4, right? That's just algebra 1. And it gives us that the slope here is equal to, what is that, negative 2? The slope is equal to negative 2. Then I'm going to use point-slope theorem. This is y minus y sub 1 is equal to m minus x minus x sub 1. It doesn't matter which point you use. You're going to get exactly the same one, but I'm going to use the point eight zero uh, zero eight. So this goes to 8, and this goes to 0, just to make this easy. This goes to negative 2, right, because it says slope is that. So we get y is equal to negative 8, I'm sorry, negative 2x plus 8. I just did all that algebra here. And this is our secondary equation. Now hopefully you can see why it was kind of important that I switched height and called it y, just so I could see the connection between those two things. So now what we're going to end up with this, is this, that we have that our volume is equal to pi x squared y, right? So take a look at this for a second. Here's y right here, isn't it? Here's this y, and it says y is this, so I'm going to take out this y, and I'm going to put in negative 2x plus 8 as my y value, right? From here, what I think I'm going to do here is this. I'm going to go ahead and multiply in this x. Otherwise, I'm going to have to use this as product rule, so I just assume not do that. So I'm going to simplify a little bit, and I'm going to get pi times negative 2x cubed plus 8x squared. you see it? Uh, and then I think, where am I? Yeah, so remember, we're supposed to optimize this. So to optimize this, I'm going to take its derivative. And we're going to take the derivative of volume with regard to the change in x. And this is just a constant multiple here, right? So take the derivative of the inside, which is negative 6x squared plus 16x, 16x. Isn't that right? And this is our derivative. And remember, from our derivative, we need our critical numbers. And our critical numbers are where this is undefined or where it goes to 0. So I guess I'm going to factor out. Can I factor out here, too? I'm going to factor out here. Oh, I can factor out 2x. So I'll take 2x pi times 8 minus 3x is equal to 0. Right? <clears throat> so our two possible values for making this thing 0 using zero product property, if x was 0, this thing would be 0 times that would be 0. So x is equal to 0. 
is a numerical possibility, or x is equal to, what is it, 8 thirds? x is equal to 8 thirds. Well, we know that the x can't be 0 because we can't have this base equal to 0, so we can eliminate that as extraneous. So I'm just going to put a line through that whole thing. So x is equal to 8. Well, if x is equal to 8, go back up here. Remember, we have this is what y is. So y is equal to negative 2x plus 8. We said here that x is equal to 8 thirds, so we get y is equal to negative 2 times 8 thirds plus 8. Just a little bit more algebra here. y is equal to negative 16 thirds plus, right, if we multiply this by 3 over 3, we get 24 thirds, so 24 thirds here. y is equal to 8 thirds. All right? If we do that and plug this into volume, we get that our volume will equal 500, was it 512 pi over 7. So hopefully this is really helpful for you. Um, volume, so it will be centimeters squared. Don't forget units, Will. Units. All right? Same thing. All optimization problems are the same. Looking for two equations, trying to figure out what we're trying to maximize or minimize, name that our primary equation, find a second equation, solve the second equation in the terms of the missing variable, take the derivative, find critical numbers, solve. Show your work. Hope this was really helpful. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. And if you haven't subscribed, please do.